continue the second part of uh, SDN. In this part, we will discuss some other dashes, challenges and open research questions for SDN. So first of all, let's discuss the advantages of SDN. Here I listed the four most noticeable advantages. And uh, the question is, how can we have these advantages with SDN? So as we all know, in SDN, the controller, which represents the network intelligence, is now decoupled from the data plane and is implemented as a software application. And of course, upgrading a software is much more simple than upgrading a hardware. Hence, network management applications can be easily modified and newly added. Since network devices have an OPI, uh, open API which makes them programmable, therefore new functions can be also easily implemented in each device. This leads to a simplified deployment and operation, and also a flexible network management. Moreover, it also lowers the operational cost. Furthermore, since the network control is no longer located in each network device, they therefore don't need to be special specially designed like in conventional networks, hence it's easily to be standardized and the standardization of the hardware will lead to a lower capital expenditure. However, there are also several challenges that we have to cope with while deploying um, SDN. In this lecture, we will discuss in detail four key challenges. They are a trade-off between performance and flexibility, scalability, security, and interoperability. So now let's uh, discuss the trade-off between the performance and the flexibility. The performance represent the processing speed of the network device while the flexibility represents the capability to adapt to new features like changes in services, applications, and protocols. Obviously, if the network devices are specialized, which means that they are designed specifically for a certain task, its performance will be much better than a standardized device. However, the flexibility of the specialized device is much lower than the standardized one, since we can't easily add new functions or modify the already implemented functions in the specialized hardware. But the general purpose hardware often provides the highest flexibility. However, its performance is limited. Therefore, there's always a trade-off between the performance and flexibility. The challenge when deploying SDN is that how to balance this trade-off, meaning that um, to specify which network functions should be implemented as a software running on a standardized hardware and which one should be still implemented in the specialized hardware. The second challenge is the scalability problem. This issue can be split into controller scalability and network node scalability. However, in this lecture, we will focus on the controller scalability only. There are three specific challenges here. Uh, the first is the latency introduced by exchanging information between the controller and the network devices. The second is uh, how the physical controllers communicate with each other. And the third challenge is, is the capability of the controller in terms of the size and the operation. Regarding the first challenge and the third challenge, a solution can be that we implement a distributed controller infrastructure to reduce the latency between the controller and the network nodes and also to reduce the um, the load of the controller. However, this doesn't eliminate the second challenge, namely the latency between the controllers. So the controllers, if we have many controllers, because these controllers has to have to be um, 
have to co communicate with each other and it will incur a lot of latencies. And it even makes the second issue more challenging. And a specific solution for SDN scalability um, that exists so far is Hyperflow. I won't discuss this here, but if you're interested, you can uh, find it in the paper in the reference. So the next challenge in SDN is the interoperability. In fact, if we want to deploy SDN, we can't immediately change the current network to SDN network. There must be a transition phase. And in this transition phase, two networks will coexist. So how can they interoperate with each other is a big question. And a solution can be that we propose a so-called hybrid network architecture that allows traditional network and SDN-enabled network to operate in harmony. For that, more research and development is required. And in order uh, to migrate completely from the legacy network to the SDN network, different working groups must be coordinated to take advantage of existing standards in networking while proposing a most effective standards to support the migration process. The last challenge is um, I want to discuss here is the security issue in SDN. Potential uh, security vulnerabilities exist across the SDN platform. However, the controller is the most vulnerable to attacks because it is the brain of the network. If the controller doesn't work correctly, the whole network will malfunction. And there are different kinds of attacks. The attackers can masquerade as a controller and carry out malicious activities. Or the attackers can create unknown flows to flood the controller or to overload the SDN switches. There has been limited research and re in limited uh, industry and research community discussion to, on these uh, security issues associated with SDN. Therefore, a greater focus on security is required if SDN is going to be acceptable in broader deployment. So um, that's about the uh, advantage and the key challenges in SDN. So now I would like to um, go into a concrete implementation of SDN. And this is the OpenFlow. OpenFlow is an open standard that allows researchers to run an experimental protocols in compass networks that we use every day. It defines a control interface for configuring the forwarding table of a network switch. So when a data flow arrives at a switch, the switch will identify the flow by matching the packets against the forwarding tables and different actions will be applied to different flows according to the forwarding tables. So you can see an example in the table. If a flow has an IP um, destination, uh, um, IP um, address destination of 1.3.21.6, uh, then it will be forwarded to the port 2 and the ca corresponding counter will be increased. In this case, the counter is 272, meaning that there are already 272 packets belonging to this flow. More advanced uh, processing of data packets are only available on the controller. So if the network switch can't match a flow to any rule in the routing table, it will be forward um, it will forward the data to the controller. So we say that um, SDN is a future internet architecture, but it is actually already applied in some networks, such as Google Data Center Network, Entity Provider Edge Network, 
in the Stanford campus networks and people expect that SDN will be widely deployed in mobile networks in three to five years. So um, now let's conclude what we have learned in this lecture. Uh, you have learned how the conventional network evolved to SDN and get to know some basic knowledge of SDN including its key features and the architectures. And in this um, lecture, we also discuss the advantage as well as the challenges when deploying SDN. So thank you very much for listening and now is the time for quizzes.